Hi, thanks for watching. In uh, this video, I will present the Mula Bridge Digital Twin Setup. And this is an exercise in a new course called Digital Twin Technologies in Condition and Structural Health Monitoring at NTNU. Uh, the physical twin here is based on a bridge model assembled with the Mula Kit number three. And the problems I'm focusing at are how to measure vibrations with a smartphone and the sensor log app, how to do vibration analysis with a Python FFT script, that means do FFT of acceleration measurements from the Mula Bridge model, and how to identify support defects by a finite element twin model, and learn to identify defects before it's too late, if possible. This is my physical twin. It's a bridge model assembled with the Mula kit number three. And this Mula kit uh, contains short bar elements, long bar elements, cable elements, which acts like wires. You have these connector elements. You have these rigid connectors, which clamps the, the beams. You have the diagonals and all these elements are uh, locked together with magnets. You also have some plastic um, tubes which you can put on the bars to stiffen them. And on the top here you see my smartphone with the sensor log app doing all the measurements. This is a short movie presenting my Mula model. These are the supports which are magnets the short beams, the diagonals, the RC90 clamps or magnets that you use to constrain the beams. And these plates are also used to keep the bridge well positioned. And here you see I've used these plastic tubes to stiffen the long bar elements. So this is my model, the physical twin. This is my digital twin model. It's a finite element model assembled in FEDEM. And uh, you can see that I've used beam elements to represent the Mula bars. I use not only one beam element in FEDEM, I use five elements to represent one Mula bar, the long Mula bar. Uh, and then I used actual springs to represent the Mula cables. I used beam elements in FEDEM to represent the diagonals. I used uh, small finite element models with the correct mass of 14 grams to represent the spheres or the connectors in MULA. Uh, here, instead of using the Magnus or the RC90 connectors, I chose to model those as free joints in FEDEM. The free joints has six degrees of freedom uh, which enables me to release one degree of freedom at a time to introduce defects. So at all free joints, I have the option to introduce defects to the bridge. To tune and validate my digital twin model, I have to do some testing. And um, I'm using my sensor log app and the smartphone to record accelerations in the X direction, which is across the bridge, in the longitudinal direction, which is along the bridge, and in the vertical set direction, which is upwards, while I'm putting excitations on the bridge. And this sensor log app uh, is storing then the data, the accelerations, in JSON files, which are later transferred to my FFT analysis. The student tasks will be as follow. They shall use the sensor log app to sample the XYZ accelerations at 100 Hertz and the outputs will be in G levels. Then they are using Python to convert the JSON files to FEDEM curve files for FFT analysis. As an option, they can also include or apply the FFT analysis in the Python scripts. Then uh, they use the FFT results to tune the twin model uh, eigen modes and they use uh, the curve files to estimate the relay damping. And let's see 
typical results from such an exercise. These are the measured X actuations from the sensor log app uh, plotted in FedEx. And here you see the time series and here you see the FFT of the time series. Not the complete time series, but from a time window spanning from 5 to 20 seconds. And the nice thing with the, the FEDEM um, plotting is that you can do an FFT of a selected time window and you can easily subtract the zero hertz component or the constant uh, value. Here you can see from the FFT plot that I have a peak at roughly 3 and one at roughly 4 hertz, which indicates that I have a mode or two modes uh, which is moving the bridge uh, uh, in the X direction. And I can use that information to tune my mass and stiffness of the bridge so I get two modes at those two frequencies. After tuning my model, I can animate the mode shape and here you see my first mode which is 2.97 Hz, that means 3 Hz, which matches the first peak in my FFT plot. Then my second mode is 4.1 Hz, which is pretty close to the peak at 4 Hz in my FFT plot. These curves show the acceleration in the longitudinal y direction. The amplitudes here are much smaller, but my first mode acting in that direction is having a peak at roughly 14 Hz. So let's check how that is corresponding to my mode in my bridge model. My digital twin model did have no modes in the longitudinal direction below 20 Hz. But this mode shape, uh, which is acting at the frequency of 13.9 Hz, is having a small Y component, which explains the small ampli amplitudes in that direction. These curves show the set accelerations, the time series and the FFT plot. And here you can see that I have a peak at roughly 8 Hz. That means there is a mode at roughly 8 Hz, which is moving uh, the bridge up and down. And this is the lowest uh, vertical mode shape I could find. This mode shape or eigenfrequency is probably the one that caused a peak in my FFT plot of the set accelerations. You can see that is a vertical displacement related to this eigen mode uh, at 7.8 Hz. And based on this, I will conclude that the first two modes acting at 3 and 4 Hz are well correlating or correlated with the peak, FFT peak of my X accelerations. Uh, the FFT peak of my Y accelerations is indicating that I have a mode acting in the longitudinal direction at roughly 14 Hz, which is also corresponding well. And then finally, uh, the FFT or my set accelerations is showing that I have a vertical mode shape acting roughly at 8 Hz, which is this one. Based on these results, I would like to conclude that my digital twin model in FEDEM is representing the physical twin, the Mula bridge, very well. Uh, so now I know the mass and stiffness distribution is okay. The next thing I have to tune is the damping. FEDEM and most other finite element solvers support Rayleigh damping. That means mass and stiffness proportional damping. And if you use both, you can tune the mode or the damping at two different eigen modes. And here I have selected to damp um, properly the eigen frequency or resonances at 4 Hz and 8 Hz, which are corresponding with the first two modes in the X direction and the first vertical mode. And these are the modes that dominate my dynamic performance of the bridge most. What I've done is to use my Excel sheet, which you can download from my homepage track.no. And here you can enter uh, the two eigenfrequencies uh, at which you want to have correct damping. And then you add the damping ratio at those two modes. And in order to calculate them, you have to calculate the logarithmic decrement, which you can do by just counting the number of samples or oscillations between the first and the last peak that you are measuring. 
And based on that, you can calculate a logarithmic decrement. And based on the logarithmic decrement, you can calculate the damping ratio for these two modes or mode shapes, which I entered here. And then uh, this spreadsheet will give my mass and stiffness proportional damping. And these are the inputs which I assign to all finite element beams in Ferrum. And then I know my structure will have the proper damping at these two frequencies. So the students will receive a digital twin model made in FEDEM, which is well representing the physical Muller bridge without any defects. That means a mint Muller bridge. But then they will receive a JSON file with these time series, new accelerations. And guess what? I've added defects. So the, if you do a FFT of these curves, you will see that the peaks have changed or moved due to the defects. So the students have to do exactly the same task as I've shown here. They have to convert the JSON file to a FedM ASCII file uh, with a Python script. They have to import the ASCII files to FedM graphs and perform a new FFT to see how those peaks have changed or moved. Then they have to add defects to the Mint FedM model and run model analysis. And then they have to check how the eigenfrequencies has changed and how well they are matching the resonances identified by the FFT peaks. And this is an iterative process and they have to add new defects until they have a good match between the eigenfrequencies and the FFT peaks. At the end, they're supposed to run a dynamic analysis with impact loads. That shows how the bridge uh, moved or um, acted when I added the, um, the excitations. And those are the exercises or tasks that the students have to do with this MOLA bridge. For those of you who are not able to complete this exercise, I can tell that even though the Muller bridge is simple, it's quite challenging to identify the defects based on modal analysis. Uh, the AIN modes might not be very sensitive to the defects, and it might be different defects that in combination gives the same uh, response as a single defect. So it's an iterative process which is quite challenging. And it's even worse for a real bridge, which is another exercise in this course. The Stavo bridge uh, was monitored by SAP back in 2017, and it's instrumented with the 20 accelerometers, which is continuously measuring the response due to traffic. During the winter in 2021, the response from the 20 accelerometers changed, and it was quite obvious that something had happened with the bridge. Uh, it wasn't possible to identify the defects or possible defects based on modal analysis. So a physical inspection was initiated and the defect was found. But it was found very late. And then it's very expensive to close down this bridge, at least partly, and replace it with a new temporary bridge. So the next exercise related to bridges in this course is to apply machine learning in order to identify the defects based on these curves as early as possible. So stay tuned, there will be a video on the Stava bridge as well.